Welcome to Vilector Online. Here we're starting a new playlist on fluid dynamics and in particular we're going to be dealing with Bernoulli's equation but not in a perfect world. We're going to have resistive forces so we're going to take into account what we call uh, non-ideal situations. Fluid through a pipe is subject to all kinds of frictional forces and internal forces within the fluid and how they then act and behave when fluid goes through the pipes under various circumstances. So you can see when we look at the Bernoulli equation, there'll be additional terms like this one right here, which represents a resistance to flow, and it'll be then in units of pressure. And we're going to learn how those terms are put together, not just that one, but other ones will appear in the Bernoulli equation, and we're going to learn how to deal with them. So here in this video, we're going to consider the kind of things that oppose the fluid flow. For example, specific to the pipe itself, the first three are the length of the pipe, the roughness of the pipe, and the diameter of the pipe. Notice when the length increases, it will increase the friction force on the fluid. It tends to be proportional to the length. On the roughness, the more we increase the inside roughness of the pipe, the more we increase the frictional losses due to that roughness, and the more we shrink the diameter, the smaller the pipe, also, the more we increase the frictional losses of the fluid. Now, here we have velocity, flow type, and, and the, shape, the shape change within the pipe. That's, that has more to do with how the fluid behaves inside the pipe. So, as the velocity of the fluid increases, then we also increase the frictional losses. So, there's another factor there we need to take into account. And what type of flow type we have? We have what we call laminar flow versus turbulent flow, and of course there's the, the phase in between the two, and we'll talk about that as well. But notice that if we go from a laminar flow to a turbulent flow, that will therefore also increase the frictional losses. And finally, we have frictional losses due to shape changes or obstacles within the pipe, such as bending of the pipe, valves, fittings, obstructions, and so forth. Again, all of those will increase the frictional losses. So you can see there's a lot of things we need to take into account. And we will, and we'll see how those additional terms are developed and how they affect the fluid flow in the pipes. Notice, friction forces tend to be nonlinear except for the length of the pipe. So whenever we change these things, there will be a nonlinear change in the friction forces and therefore the frictional losses. So we'll show you how to calculate those as well. And then ultimately, we'll figure out how to then design the pipes, how to design the, the way in which fluid flow from one to another in order to accomplish what we need to accomplish. We also have to note that the friction forces tend to be nonlinear, except for the length, because if we increase the length, the friction forces will increase proportionally, but for all the other factors, they will not act proportional to the change. It'll be inversely proportional, or there'll be a nonlinear proportionality there. And so therefore, we need to take that into account when we come up with the ways in which we determine how much of resistive force there is to the fluid flow, and we'll determine how to do that in the videos to come.